paralysis is when your body paralyzes your muscles so that you don't act out your dreams during the night. But if you wake up during that process, it can be terrifying. Now, in this video, I'm gonna tell you 10 things that you should never do during sleep paralysis. These are sleep paralysis dangers, if you will. Things you should avoid doing. And you really need to pay attention to these things and make sure that you don't do them because otherwise it's gonna be a lot more scary than it needs to be. It's gonna be terrifying, okay? Now sleep paralysis is actually nothing to worry about if you follow these steps and if you make sure that you just don't panic. But before we get into this video, make sure you do subscribe to the channel because I do share regular lucid dreaming tips and tutorials as well as sleep hacks and methods as well. So number one, the first thing you should never do during sleep paralysis is panic. It's so easy to just panic and think, oh my God, I'm stuck in a state, I can't escape, it feels terrifying, and you just wanna be able to move. But if you panic, you actually make it worse. So just remember to stay calm, stay focused on just avoiding the panic stage and just remaining calm, try not to move. This leads me nicely onto number two, which is just don't move, try not to move. During sleep paralysis, if you wake up and the first thing you think is, oh my God, I can't move, and then you try and like twitch your, your hand or move your leg or something like that and it doesn't move, that's just gonna make you panic even more and that's gonna keep you in the sleep paralysis state, it's gonna keep you in that scared, uh, experience which nobody wants to really have so remember don't try and move during sleep paralysis it's a big mistake number three and this is kind of uh, don't get too scared by this but try not to scream if you enter sleep paralysis and your first thought is I can't move I want to escape this and you then try and say something you try and shout out you know asking for help or if you're sleeping with a partner or even just screaming out for somebody that's in the house to try and help you that's just gonna reinforce the scared experience that you're having. It's gonna make it even more ter terrifying than it needs to be. So don't try, try not to say anything or try not to shout or scream out or anything like that. Now in a couple of minutes, I'm gonna explain how you can actually use sleep paralysis to lucid dream, but let's just stick with this for now. So number four, the fourth thing that you should never do during sleep paralysis is to try and escape. If you try and escape the sleep paralysis state, you're gonna be fighting against your own body and your own mind, which is a losing battle. You're not gonna be able to do it. Now, there is actually a purpose to sleep paralysis. It's designed to help make sure that you don't act out your dreams during the day and during the night. By trying to escape that state too soon, you're gonna be interfering with your natural process and your natural sleep cycles. So don't try and escape, there's no need to, because it's not, it shouldn't be scary, it won't hurt you, and it can't do you any harm, so there's no point trying to escape, especially when, as I'm gonna explain in a minute, you can actually turn it into a lucid dream very easily. So number five, try not to stay in the sleep paralysis state for too long, okay? I know this sounds a bit controversial, but if you stay in the sleep paralysis for too long, then you might find it increasingly scary and uncomfortable as time goes on. If you just stay in the state for a few minutes and you know you tell yourself that you will soon turn it into a lucid dream, that's fine, but if you stay in it for 10 minutes or even 15 minutes, it's gonna start feeling more and more uncomfortable and you're gonna experience things like the sleep paralysis demon and various other scary things, you know, vibrations, it can feel like there's a crushing feeling on your chest. You don't want any of that, so try not to stay in the state for too long. And I'm gonna explain in a minute how you can escape the sleep paralysis experience and just turn it into a normal lucid dream, which is gonna be much more fun. All right, so number six, try not to get frustrated. Okay, I know it can be annoying, it can be very frustrating, but if you just try and stay calm and just remind yourself that the sleep paralysis is a fairly normal thing, everybody experiences it, and uh, just try and remain calm, you're gonna have a much better time. It's really gonna be so much easier to deal with if you just try not to get frustrated at it and just tell yourself that it's normal that you can't move. All right, so number eight, try not to lucid dream too soon. At the end of this video, I'm gonna explain how you can actually lucid dream as a result of sleep paralysis. But if you try and lucid dream too soon, before you're ready, then what's gonna happen is you're gonna be unable to lucid dream. You're gonna be more aware of the fact that you're in sleep paralysis. And that's just gonna, what, that, what that's gonna mean is that the whole thing is gonna be more uncomfortable for you. So try not to lucid dream immediately. You can, you can lucid dream, but not straight away. What you need to do is just let the sleep paralysis run its course and naturally shift into a lucid dream. This will take anywhere from one to 10 minutes. It really depends on you know how deep you're in the sleep paralysis, how much your mind is awake. But as I said, try not to lucid dream before, it's, before it naturally feels like you can enter the lucid dream. If you've watched my other videos about uh, techniques like the wild, this is very similar to that. You wanna try and wait until the perfect moment before 
you jump into the lucid dream and uh, actually enter that state. And number eight, this is quite an important one. Try not to forget that it's actually not real. So the sleep paralysis state can feel scary, especially if you have an experience with something like the sleep paralysis demon, which is really just all in your mind. But if you forget that it's not real and you actually take it for real and uh, believe that it's actually happening to you, it can feel scary. It can feel like you know it hurts in some cases if there's uh, something pressing down on your chest. So try not to take it too seriously. Try and constantly remind yourself that the sleep paralysis experience is not actually real. It's just in your mind and your mind is paralyzing your muscles so that you don't act out your dreams. There's nothing else to it, you know, there's no secret hidden danger of sleep paralysis that I'm not telling you, that's literally it. All right, so number nine, which you'll recognize this tip if you've watched my other video about the wild technique, try not to tense up your throat too much. If you're in an experience where, mainly in sleep paralysis, but you know, you can have this also when you're trying to do the wild, it can be very easy to tense up your throat and to try and say something or to try and, you know, go as if you're gonna move or breathe in a different way. But all that does is it makes the state even harder to escape and it's just gonna make the whole thing really frustrating and uncomfortable. So try not to tense your throat up too much. We hold a lot of tension in our throats, in our neck, and in our jaw as well. So I'm just about to explain how to actually turn it into a lucid dream, but first I wanna tell you the last thing you should never do in sleep paralysis, which is number 10, don't get discouraged. If you experience regular sleep paralysis, it can be very discouraging and it can stop you from wanting to learn more about lucid dreaming, it can stop you from even being excited about dreams in general. You know, you might even be scared to go to sleep, which is really not what you want to be having as an experience. So try not to get discouraged, remind yourself constantly that the sleep paralysis state is natural, it's safe, it's not going to hurt you in any way, and it's actually a good thing. You know, if you didn't have sleep paralysis, then you would be acting out your dreams. You'd be doing things like kicking the bed or rolling out of bed, sleepwalking and causing harm to yourself in the real world. So sleep paralysis is actually a good thing. And so lastly, I want to explain how you can turn sleep paralysis into a beautiful lucid dream. This is a really easy thing you can do. And it, basically, you're just going to follow the steps of the wild technique. So the wake and juice lucid dreaming technique involves keeping your mind awake while your body goes to sleep. and actually. One of the stages in that technique is to go through sleep paralysis. It's a very simple thing you can do. So all you need to do is just focus on not moving, like we said, not panicking, but also not trying to wake yourself up. You know, you want to keep yourself in that state so your mind, uh, sorry, your body is still asleep, but your mind is going to be kept awake. This is really important, and this is essentially how you do the wild technique in the first place. You know, you keep your mind awake throughout that. So as you experience the sleep paralysis you will slowly start seeing what's called hypnagogic imagery. This, is, this can be patterns, it can be lines or shapes, it can be colors, it could even be flashes of light that you see behind your eyelids. Uh, but what happens is if you keep yourself aware and awake during that stage, slowly you'll start to see pieces of a dream scene forming. You know, you might see like the, the quick, a quick flash of a skyline or a tree line, or even you might see as if you're walking down a street, you'll just see a flash of a dream scene and then you'll go back to seeing the shapes and colors. Now to actually enter a lucid dream during that, what you need to do is constantly remind yourself, as we said in the other tips, that the sleep paralysis stage is not real, it's not gonna harm you and it will be over soon. So remind yourself of those things, but then also keep telling yourself, I will lucid dream any moment now. I can control my dreams. These positive affirmations, which if you look around on my channel, you can find some other videos that I've made about this, this sort of thing. But just keep reminding yourself that you're gonna enter a lucid dream, you're gonna be able to control it. So if you enjoyed this video, guys, please remember to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications because I make almost weekly lucid dreaming tutorials. I make videos about all sorts of sleep-related topics. And uh, if you are one of my existing subscribers, I'm sorry about the noise. I'm actually staying in Marbella right now, as uh, you can see from this view. And uh, unfortunately, this is the best lit place, sunlight, uh, the natural daylight is coming in from this area. So this is the best place to film videos. And uh, I will be home in, uh, in a couple of weeks where I'll be able to use my proper recording stuff. But yeah, this is it for now. And remember to go and subscribe to my uh, to YouTube channel. Follow the Instagram, which is how to lucid. Uh, links to all this is in the description. And if you do want to see my travel vlogs, I'm making almost, almost daily travel videos on Transcend Travel, which the link for that is in the description as well. Now, lastly, just leave a comment letting me know what you think about this. Have you ever experienced sleep paralysis? What did it feel like? 
and uh, let me know if there's anything I missed, if there's any warnings that you would give. Uh, leave a comment below and remember to subscribe. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching guys. This video and this channel are supported by my Patreon followers. Please consider giving just a dollar a month to support this channel or just click the links in the description. You'll find links to various Lucid Dreaming products, articles, techniques and tutorials. If you did enjoy this video, please click the notification bell and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Why are you still watching this? You should have clicked one of my related videos by now, right? Or subscribed or gone onto my website or something like that.